what's up youtube i hope all of you are having a great day so far in today's upload we will be going over all of the best settings in call of duty black ops cold war and let's not waste any time so let's just get right into this so to start things off so this is going to be for controller players i do play on pc so i'll give you guys like my pc graphic settings but since i do controller on pc i'm not going to be going over the keyboard and mouse binds if you are a keyboard and mouse player there should be a video out there that could help you out but this video is just going to be over all the controller settings and then i'll show you guys my graphic settings i'm not going to go in depth with the graphic settings but i'll show you guys what i'm running and just so you guys know i'm not going to be going over every single setting just the ones that matter just so it doesn't make this video too long so first off for the display mode if you want the best graphics possible you want to do full screen sometimes people like to do full screen windowed if you got two monitors you want to use a second one without having to tap out the first one but i just like full screen because you get the best graphics and then the refresh rate i'm using for my monitor is 144 uh, the gameplay v-sync disabled many v-sync disabled nvidia reflex low latency i have mine on enabled normal render resolution i have mine at 100 display resolution 1920 by 1080 aspect ratio automatic the color by modes i have not adjusted these yet my field of view that i play on is 105 sorry if my hair falls a lot states in quarantine and i can't get a haircut until we open up and spend like two months but so anyways so the ads field of view i have mine on affected the brightness is going to be whatever you prefer frame rate limit i have mine on custom gameplay custom frame limit my limit is 144 so i just put it at 200 menu custom frame rate limit i have mine on 60 same with the one below it just to save my computer from working too hard for the details and textures i have my texture quality on low the model quality is going to be on low and then i installed the textures and models the 4k interface textures disabled special effects medium screen space reflection disabled object view distance high water tessellation and believe that's how you say it disabled shadow and lightning i have my volumetric lighting on low shadow quality is going to be low dynamic shadows is going to be on all this one's actually very important to have on because if someone's around a corner you want to be able to see them before they actually show up on your screen this shadow will allow you to do that for these special effects shadows you want this on disabled weapon shadow enabled ray tracing disabled ray tracing local shadows disabled nba inclusion disabled post processing effects the anti-aliasing quality is on ultra sometimes i'll move it down to high if my computer starts to stutter ambient occlusion quality disabled motion blur disabled you really want to make sure you have this on disabled you do not want this on this is going to make you sick it's going to make you just a way worse player motion blur quality that does not matter because you want this disabled subsurface scattering enabled the order independent transparency is on high for the advanced vrm usage target mine's on default display gamma computer srgb and that's gonna wrap it up for the graphics now let's get into the audio settings for the master volume i have mine at 100 the music volume is going to be 30 this is just so i can hear the sound effects a little bit easier which is why i have it at 100 and that is because i want to be able to hear the enemy's footsteps as easy as possible and the footsteps are included in the sound effects Yes, it does get annoying with the loud ass helicopters and just the loud cars in this game, but it's going to help you hear footsteps louder, so that's why I like to have it at 100. And then the music volume is at 30, just so it doesn't mask the footsteps. For the dialogue volume, I have mine at 40 because it's kind of helpful to hear what your character says. The cinematics volume does not matter, I just have mine on 20. For the audio presets, if you want to hear the most footsteps as possible and the loudest footsteps, make sure you have it on super bass boost, this is the best one for footsteps. For the hit marker sound effects, that doesn't matter, uh, this one doesn't matter, voice chat doesn't matter, all of these don't matter at all so i think yeah so just an audio you just want to try to copy mine move it to your personal preference but i recommend to have these settings for the interface so a lot of people actually like to have their subtitles enabled because your character sometimes does say things and it's helpful to see what your character is saying but i usually can just hear it and i don't really need to see it so i just have mine on disabled but i recommend trying to enable and see how it goes next up for the hud balance you want to have these as far into the center as possible because you don't want to have to look all the way to the right side of your screen to be able to see that mini map or i guess that left side for the mini map for the crosshairs i have mine on shown hit marker visuals shown 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 full name for the horizontal compass i have mine on hidden because i think it's a worthless aspect of this game so i have mine on hidden the floating damage numbers enabled zombies name and health bar show all the telemetry so my fps counter is going to be shown shown this stuff doesn't really matter this is just what i prefer it's all personal preference so that's going to wrap it up for the interface now let's go into the controller settings which is the main reason why you guys are here so for the stick sensitivity i believe that 1010 is the best one i'm not the most accurate 1010 i'm trying to get really good at 99 then i'll move it to 1010 i say 1010 is the best because you can 180 people extremely quick but you still can have decent accuracy it's not like 20 sensitivity where you can really 180 someone but then your shots aren't going to be as accurate so i think 1010 is like a perfect sensitivity that i think everyone should try to get used to but at the moment i am at 99 for the ads stick sensitivity this is all personal preference say you're not the most accurate player you could keep the sensitivity like decently high and then actually lower this one so then while you're ads it'll be a lot slower make it so it's a lot easier to hit your shots 
what I used to do on Modern Warfare is have this at like 11 or 12, and then I would keep this at like 0.8. For this game, it feels weird. For Modern Warfare, it feels pretty good. So for this game, I just like to keep it at 1.0. Maybe when I go to 10.10, I'll bring this down to like 0.9, just so it doesn't affect me too much. But again, this is all personal preference. I would just mess around and see what works best for you. For the ADS-6 sensitivity for the high zoom, I recommend to have 1.1. For some reason, it's a lot easier to snipe with this. For the button layout, if you're trying to do slide cancels, I would switch this to tactical. That's if you don't play claw or you don't have like a scuff controller. I have an Xbox Elite, so I have all my front buttons are all in the back. And so it doesn't really matter if I change the button layout. But if you don't have a scuff, like where you don't have the paddles on the back, I would switch this to tactical because it's going to make it a lot easier to be able to do your slide cancels. The setting below is where you can flip the triggers with the bumpers. If you want to be able to fire your weapon faster, you're going to want to switch the firing from the trigger to the bumper because there's less time for you to have to pull down this bumper for your weapon to fire. Say you have a scuff, you don't really have to worry about that because my trigger is only going to go down about halfway because that's all it needs to be able to register on the game. Next up for invert vertical look that is disabled obviously and response curve type. So if you are a newer player, I would do linear. It's hard to explain all these, but if you're a newer player, like just beginner, like my girlfriend, I would do linear. If you're starting to be out of that beginner bracket, I would do standard. Then once you start to get very good at the game and you can start doing those PC flicks, I'd switch to dynamic because it helps you out with that. For the control vibration, I recommend all you guys to have disabled. For years, I played with enabled, but it makes sense to have disabled because less things vibrating in your hand should make it so you're more accurate. And so I just thought about that and I was like, obviously I'm gonna be more accurate if it's disabled. Yes, it feels weird, but over time I should get used to it. So I switched it from enabled to disabled and about a week later, I was way better than I was before. My controller batteries lasted longer. And so overall, I just think it's better to have it disabled. For the gameplay section, target aim assist, you want this enabled obviously for the target aim assist mode i have mine on standard the other two feel pretty bugged so i would just keep it on standard until they update them you could try these out but they are a little bit bugged if you want more in-depth analysis on these they probably have a couple of videos on youtube explaining them this just takes a long time to explain so i'm not going to explain them all but so anyways i recommend all you guys just to play on standard for now for the ads aim assist this goes for campaign and zombies this is like when it locks onto them it's like on the campaign if you go to shoot an enemy you aim in it's going to automatically lock onto that character this is what this does i actually recommend to have it on disabled so then you can practice your aim if you're playing the campaign or zombies for the next setting grounded mantle behavior i have mine on on second press because sometimes in the middle of a gunfight i want to jump up even though you're not supposed to because you lose aim assist when you jump but sometimes i will jump and then i'll mantle and it'll kill me which is very annoying but the setting right here is going to actually fix that it's going to make it so i have to push the jump button twice if i want to mantle onto anything which does get it a little bit annoying but it saves me from accidentally mantling in the middle of a gunfight next up for the ads site behavior hold steady labor hold um armor behavior i recommend to have apply all it's just gonna make it easier so you don't have to hold your wire triangle button the whole time for the attack vehicle control hold i have mine on aim based for the stick layout i have mine on default this is right here for your dead zone so if you look on your screen and you see that your crosshairs kind of start to drift you can adjust these values and it's going to prevent that drift so the higher that you increase it's going to take more input for your crosshairs to move so if you're on screen you see a dragon to the right then i would just go down to the right stick and then just increase this until it stops moving you just don't want to do it too much just do enough so it stops moving so you have the same thing for your left stick i would just adjust this until it stops moving for the max inputs i wouldn't focus on these ones these ones don't matter just focus on the minimum inputs for the auto move forward i have mine on disabled for the auto sprint if you like to do slide cancels i would do enabled if you don't like to do slide cancels i wouldn't have enabled for the sprint cancels reload i have mine on disabled parachute auto deploy enable this is personal preference interact slash reload behavior i have mine on tap to interact it's kind of hard to explain these it's all personal preference so i would just look on the right hand side of the screen read these and pick which one works best for you if you're trying to throw c4 a lot i would do tap to interact if you don't really throw c4 you could just do tap to reload or prioritize interact so i think that's going to wrap it up for this video there is over here if you're a streamer and you want to prevent stream snipers or you don't want people to know your name you have all these settings down here which you can mess with that will hide your name hide the other players names you can add a delay if you don't want people to stream snipe you and so if you're a streamer i would just mess with all these it's all personal preference so that's why i'm not going to go over them but so anyways i think that is going to wrap it up for this video hope you guys did enjoy hopefully if you did enjoy you hit the like button i hope that all you guys are enjoying season one so far hope all of you are having a great day so far and i will hopefully see you in my next video